Hello everyone. In this last session of hip bone, I will demonstrate you the general features and attachments of the ischium. This is the left hip bone in anatomical position in which the ischium forms the posterior inferior part of the hip bone and also the adjoining posterior inferior two-fifth of acetabulum and the posterior boundary of the obturator foramen. The ischium has two parts. This is the body and this is the ramus of ischium. The ramus of ischium meet with the inferior ramus of pubis and forms a conjoint issue pubic rami. A conjoint issue pubic rami. The body has upper end. The upper end forms a posterior inferior two-fifth of acetabulum. And the lower end, which is in the form of a large rough tuberosity, and that is known as ischial tuberosity. So this is the ischial tuberosity, which gives off ramus in the lower part. It has three borders and three surfaces. The anterior border forms the posterior margin of obturator foramen. The posterior border is actually the continuation of the posterior border of ileum. So it starts from the lower part of greater sciatic notch. And then we trace it down. This is the ischial spine. Further lower down, there is another smaller notch, which is known as lesser sciatic notch. And then ends at the upper end of ischial tuberosity. So this is the posterior border. And the third border is the lateral border, which forms the lateral margin of the ischial tuberosity. There are three surfaces. This is the femoral surface, which is between the anterior border and the lateral border. This is the dorsal surface, which is continuous above with the gluteal surface of ileum. This surface starts as a convex part below which there is a grooved part. So this is the dorsal surface. And then there is a pelvic surface. The pelvic surface forms a, a part of the lateral wall of ischial rectal fossa in the lower end. Coming to the ischial tuberosity, which is a very important part of the ischium, we can divide the ischial tuberosity into two parts, upper part and lower part by a transverse ridge. As shown here, this is a transverse ridge, upper part, lower part. The upper part is again divided by an oblique ridge. This is an oblique ridge into a superolateral part and inferomedial part. So this is superolateral part and the inferomedial part which, is, which are the parts of the upper area, whereas the lower area is divided into outer and inner parts by vertical ridge. So this is the lower area divided by vertical ridge into outer and inner parts. So this is the ischial tuberosity. The conjoint ischial pubic rami has upper border, lower border, outer surface and the inner surface. The lower border of the conjoint ischial pubic rami forms a subpubic angle or pubic arch with a similar bone of the opposite side. So this angle which is formed is known as subpubic angle. Now coming to the attachments on the ischium, first the ischial spine gives attachment to sacrospinous ligament along its margins. The dorsal surface of the ischial spine is crossed by 
internal pudendal vessels and the pudendal nerve whereas the pelvic surface of ischial spine gives origin to the posterior fibers of levator ani muscle the lesser sciatic notch is occupied by the tendon of obturator internus muscle the upper margin of the lesser sciatic notch gives origin to superior gemellus and the lower margin of lesser sciatic notch gives origin to inferior gemellus muscle coming to the femoral surface along the margin of the obturator foramen there is origin of obturator externus muscle whereas along the upper part of the lateral margin of ischial debrosity there is origin of quadratus femoris muscle coming to the pelvic surface along the margin of obturator foramen there is origin of obturator internus muscle the lower end of this pelvic surface is a part of the lateral wall of ischio rectal fossa coming to the dorsal surface so we can see here the convex upper part of the dorsal surface which is related to piriformis muscle sciatic nerve and nerve to quadratus femoris muscle whereas the lower grooved part is related to the tendon of obturator internus muscle the obturator internus muscle arises around the margin of obturator foramen from the pelvic aspect this is the origin of obturator internus whose tendon will pass through the lesser sciatic notch occupy the grooved part of the dorsal surface and then go towards its insertion into the greater trochanter of femur the greater sciatic notch is filled up by a muscle the muscle which comes from the pelvis whose origin is from the sacrum it goes out and fills up the greater sciatic notch this muscle is piriformis muscle which fills up the greater sciatic notch there is a small gap above piriformis through which the superior gluteal nerve and superior gluteal vessels come out whereas there is a small gap below piriformis muscle through which sciatic nerve posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh pudendal nerve internal pudendal vessels nerve to obturator internus and nerve to quadratus femoris they all exit via the greater sciatic notch below piriformis out of these three out of these structures the pudendal nerve internal pudendal vessels and the nerve to obturator internus they pass via the lesser sciatic notch and enter into perineum so we must know what are the various structures passing through greater sciatic notch and the lesser sciatic notch now the attachments on ischial tuberosity the superolateral part the superolateral part there is origin of semi membranosus muscle whereas the inferomedial part the inferomedial part there is origin of semi tendinosus muscle and long head of biceps femoris muscle the outer lower part gives origin to the hamstring part of adductor magnus muscle whereas the adductor part of adductor magnus comes from the ramus of ischium whereas the inner lower part is covered with fibro fatty tissue which supports the body weight in sitting position the medial margin of ischial tuberosity gives attachment to sacro tuberous ligament whereas the lateral margin gives attachment to ischio femoral ligament 
Coming to the attachment on the conjoint issue pubic grammae, the upper border gives attachment to obturator membrane. The obturator membrane is attached all along the margin of obturator foramen, leaving a gap in the region of obturator groove through which the obturator nerve and vessels come out of the pelvis and enter the medial compartment of thigh. The lower border of conjoint issue pubic grammae gives attachment to fascia lata and to colis fascia. Colis fascia is the membranous layer of superficial fascia of perineum. The outer surface of conjoint issue pubic grammae gives attachment to obturator externus along the margin of obturator foramen. Also, the adductor part of adductor magnus mainly from the ramus of ischium and the extensions of the origin of gracilis adductor brevis which are coming mainly from the inferior ramus of pubis. The attachments on the inner surface of conjoint issue pubic rami. For that we must know the schematic diagram. This is the inner surface of the conjoint issue pubic rami, which is divided into three areas, upper, middle and lower by two transverse ridges. So there will be two transverse ridges which divides this area into upper, middle and lower parts. The upper part has the origin of obturator internus muscle around the margin of obturator foramen. The middle part gives origin to two muscles. One is sphincter urethrae and other is deep transverse perineum muscle whereas it is also related to dorsal nerve of penis and to internal pudendal vessels. The lower part gives attachment to crust of penis which is here and origin to muscles ischiocavernosus muscle and superficial transverse perineum muscle in the lower part. So these are the attachments on the inner surface of conjoint issue pubic rami. Lastly, we must know some differences in the male and female hip bones. The most important point starting from the priority. This is the greater sciatic notch which is wider in female about 70 to 75 degree in the female. In the male, it is about 50 to 55 degrees. Next is the conjoint tissue pubic rami, which is everted, that is protruding outside in males because of the attachment of crust of penis, as I just described. So in males, the lower border of conjoint tissue pubic rami is everted, whereas the ischial spine is interned in the males. This is the chilotic line extending from iliac crest to the iliopubic eminence which is nothing but the medial border of ilium. There are two parts of chilotic line, the upper sacral part and the lower pelvic part. In females, the pelvic part of the chilotic line is longer than the sacral part. Along the upper margin of greater sciatic notch, there is preauricular sulcus. The preauricular sulcus is deeper and more marked in the females. The obturator foramen is large and oval in male, small and triangular in females. Coming to the acetabulum, the acetabulum is large in males and its diameter is approximately equal to the distance from its anterior margin to pubic symphysis. So if the acetabulum is small or if its diameter is less, then the distance from its anterior margin to pubic symphysis 
then it is a female hip bone. And lastly, the subpubic angle, which is formed by the two conjoint issue of pubic rami, is wider in the female, about 80 to 85 degree, and it is less in the males. So that completes our hip bone in three parts. Thank you.